Good morning. I'm Stanley Korn. Uh, today I will be discussing with you the space conveyor and how it could revolutionize space travel. The proposed space conveyor is in some ways similar to the proposed space elevator. A space elevator consists of a cable anchored to the ground at one end and attached to the other end to a counterweight some distance above the height of geostationary orbit, held aloft by the centrifugal force resulting from Earth's rotation. To be a practical use, the counterweight would presumably be a space station, herein referred to as the top station. Traversing the cable between the ground station and the top station is a climber capable of transporting loads between the two stations. A major limitation of the space elevator is that the climber must make a round trip from the ground station to the top station and back before it could carry a second load to the top station. Depending of, on the speed of the climber, the journey is likely to take several days each way. The space conveyor is similar to the space elevator in that it too consists of a ground station connected to a top station some distance above the height of geostationary orbit. However, instead of being joined by a cable, the ground station is connected to the top station by a conveyor belt moving along rollers at both stations. Here you see an illustration of the space conveyor along with a close-up of the ground station. Spaced along the conveyor belt at regular intervals are the attachment sites. To attach to the conveyor belt, a conveyor car waits behind the conveyor belt for an unoccupied attachment site to approach the bottom of the conveyor belt, at which time it accelerates along a track using magnetic levitation and catches up with and hooks onto the attachment site while the latter is moving along the horizontal portion of the conveyor belt between the two rollers. The conveyor car is then carried aloft to the top station. Conveyor cars arriving from the top station unhook themselves when they reach the bottom of the conveyor belt. The track leads to a holding area not shown where the conveyor cars are loaded and unloaded. A similar procedure is used to attach and detach the conveyor cars at the top station except that the conveyor cars are taken into the interior of the top station for loading and unloading. <clears throat> The components to construct spacecraft would be carried to the top station by the conveyor cars and assembled at the top station, and the spacecraft would be released from the top of the top station. Since there may be hundreds, if not thousands, of conveyor cars simultaneously moving up and down the conveyor belt, the carrying capacity of the space conveyor is vastly greater than that of the space elevator. Furthermore, while the space elevator must expend energy in order to lift the climber from the ground up to the height of Jews' stationary orbit, it could coast the rest of the way up to the top station. If the height of the conveyor belt is chosen so that the force of gravity acting on the conveyor belt with the attached conveyor cars exactly balances the centrifugal force resulting from Earth's rotation, the only energy necessary the only energy that the conveyor belt would need to expend would be the small amount due to friction on the bearings supporting the rollers, as well as air resistance acting on the tiny fraction of the conveyor belt within Earth's atmosphere. <clears throat> if the space conveyor is constructed so as to be at the height of energy neutral operation, that would be when the uh, centrifugal force exactly balances the gravitational force, which turns out to be 144,000 kilometers or 89,000 miles. The balance between gravity and the cent and centrifugal force would hold even if the upward, even if the mass of the upward moving traffic exceeds that of the downward moving traffic, as is likely to be the case for several centuries after the conveyor belt begins operation as humanity leaves Earth to explore and colonize the rest of the solar system. <clears throat> so how is it possible to sustain a net upward flow of mass 
from a state of lower gravitational potential, that is the ground level, to one of higher gravitational potential, using only the energy necessary to overcome friction and air resistance. Let me explain. <clears throat> the first thing to recognize is that the, con is that the space conveyor lies in a rotating frame of reference, namely rotating Earth. Newton's laws of motion can be applied in a uniformly rotating frame of reference, provided we introduce what physicists refer to as fictitious forces, one of which is centrifugal force, which we have already considered. The second so-called fictitious force is the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force is interesting in the way that it operates. It doesn't affect any object at rest with respect to the rotating frame. An object in motion relative to the rotating frame will experience a Coriolis force perpendicular to both its direction of motion and the axis of rotation of that frame, in this case, Earth's axis of rotation. Thus, the upward moving west side of the conveyor belt, again, this is anchored at the equator, <clears throat> the will experience a Coriolis force in the westward direction. You can it's the upward direction is the direction of motion. Uh, the east-west axis north is into the diagram here. So the east-west would be uh, perpendicular to both those directions. <clears throat> okay. Three. Let me see here. Get this. Okay. Okay, so the uh, upward moving portion of the conveyor belt will be pulled westward by the Coriolis force, whereas the downward moving eastward portion will be pulled eastward by the Coriolis force. Now, if you have an upward, if the upward moving traffic is exactly equal to the downward moving traffic, then the two forces will balance and you'll have no net force acting on the uh, space conveyor. However, if you have a net upward flow of traffic, then there's going to be a net westward force acting on the space conveyor. And that's going to, since it's anchored to the ground, it's going to uh, have a tangential westward force acting on the surface of the earth, which is going to exert a torque along ac about ax Earth's axis of rotation. And uh, it would be in a counterclockwise direction counterclockwise direction as viewed from the top of the South Pole, whereas Earth is rotating in a clockwise direction. So it's going to result in a slowing down Earth's rotation. <clears throat> now, however, the uh, since the uh, mass of the conveyor cars is just a tiny fraction of Earth's mass, the resulting the slowing down of Earth's rotation is uh, likely to be undetectable except uh, perhaps by the most accurate atomic clocks. So we have identified the source of energy that uh, is involved in lifting the conveyor cars. Uh, namely, we're tapping into the energy of Earth's rotation. And if you consider like Earth's gravity well is kind of like a prison, this is kind of like a get out of jail free card. <clears throat> okay. To explore the outer solar system, to explore the solar system outside of Earth's orbit, the spacecraft would be released at the top station when Earth is between the sun and the top station, giving the spacecraft an initial speed with respect to the sun equal to the sum of Earth's orbital speed and the speed of the top station relative to Earth, thus giving the spacecraft a boost on its journey to a destination in the outer solar system. When the destination of the spacecraft is somewhere inside of Earth's orbit, <clears throat> the spacecraft would be released when the top station is between the Earth and the Sun, thus causing the spacecraft to initially fall toward the Sun in an elliptical orbit. <clears throat> in traveling from the Earth to the Moon, it would not be practical to do so using spacecraft released from the top station because such a spacecraft would have a high initial speed relative to the moon, requiring it to use a considerable amount of rocket fuel in order to slow down before it could safely land on the moon. Instead, the journey to the moon would, could be made 
using compact spacecraft the size of conveyor cars that could, like the latter, hook onto the conveyor belt and be carried aloft. However, instead of unhooking at the top station, these uh, small spacecraft would detach from the conveyor belt at a height some distance above the height of geostationary orbit, but below the height of the top station, des designed to put the spacecraft in a long elliptical orbit around Earth, calculated to rendezvous with the moon at a relatively low speed. On the return back to Earth, the uh, spacecraft could unhook onto an, uh, could hook onto an unoccupied attachment site on the down on the down removing portion of the conveyor belt, a difficult but doable maneuver. <clears throat> as far as uh, the moon is concerned, uh, it wouldn't be practical to uh, build a, uh, a space conveyor there because of the long sidereal periods, approximately 27 days. Instead, what would be probably be more practical, uh, rather than have a, a vertical launches of the the uh, rocket, because <clears throat> that would cause a you have to expend rocket fuel. Rather, you could have a long track and accelerate the uh, spacecraft using magnetic levitation, and to get to uh, your orbital, you know, you get to escape velocity that way. And on return, you can have the uh, spacecraft uh, land on the same uh, strip and uh, using mag re regenerative magnetic braking to uh, uh, recover some of the kinetic energy of the rocket. Um, <clears throat> and to power it, you could have solar re rays on both sides of the track and uh, s rechargeable batteries to store the energy for nighttime operation. <clears throat> okay. If... If and when the spacecraft becomes operational, it can reduce the cost of space travel to the point where it becomes affordable to the general public and becomes as common as air travel is today. Okay, this chart shows the technical specifications associated with the space conveyor. As previously mentioned, the height of the space conveyor for energy neutral operation is 144,000 kilometers or 89,000 miles. The gravity, in quotes, at the top station, actually due to centrifugal forces, is about 8% of Earth's surface gravity, which is about uh, half of lunar gravity, which is kind of uh, convenient because it's, it's enough to keep things from flying off, but uh, it could be useful uh, for, for example, those who are mobility impaired could uh, uh, take a spend some time there. It could be as a tourist attraction as well as a, a launch a platform for <clears throat> spacecraft into deep space. Um, okay, in order to construct a space conveyor, the tensile strength of the conveyor belt must be sufficient to support its own weight plus the weight of any attached conveyor cars from the ground up to the height of geostationary orbit. Since the weight of the conveyor belt is proportional to its density, the relevant variable is the tensile strength divided by the density, which is known as the specific strength. The minimum specific strength required for the conveyor belt, as well as for the tether of the space elevator, is uh, 58 gigapascals per gram per cubic centimeter while the maximum specific strength of carbon nanotubes that have been produced in the laboratory is a 47 gigapascals per gram per cubic centimeter, well short of the minimum specific strength requirement. The theoretical limit of the space, of the specific strength of carbon nanotubes is 224 gigapascals per gram per cubic centimeter. So the possibility of using carbon nanotubes to f fabricate the conveyor belt uh, of uh, the space conveyor cannot be ruled out. Since the minimum specific strength required for the conveyor belt of the space conveyor is the same as that of for the tether of a space elevator, it follows that if the technology exists for constructing a space conveyor, it likewise exists for constructing a space conveyor. It likely, for a space elevator, it likely exists for a space conveyor. Therefore, given the substantial advantages of the space conveyor as compared to the space elevator, namely vastly increased carrying capacity as well as greatly reduced 
uh, energy per unit payload carried aloft, it makes sense to devote our resources to designing and building a space conveyor rather than a space elevator. A detailed description of the space conveyor can be found in the space travel chapter of my uh, book, it's ebook, uh, give, Cutting the Gordian Knot Simple Solutions to Complex Societal Problems, available at Smashwords at smashwords.com slash book slash view slash 628871. Or you can uh, go on the smashwords.com website and enter my name in the search bar of the website to pull up uh, all of the books that I authored. If you have any questions which are, um, provide feedback, I can be contacted at sd corn at uh, yahoo.com. Uh, 